So I'm here, Mary Lou, with Lynn Doyle of Unity Psychiatric Care. And Lynn has agreed to come and speak to us today because Resource for Care is a resource for seniors when they need information and don't know where to find it. Yeah. Often, during my journey of 10 years and holding the hands of clients and family members, I found that we don't know a lot about caring for our parents, especially. And then we go to Dr. Internet and look for the answers, and we don't know who to trust. We don't know if the information's correct or if the person we're getting the advice from is in some far off place. And so the goal for Resource for Care is to interview and give a platform to local professionals that are in healthcare and wellness and allow the public to be able to connect directly with them. So there's no intermediary, there's no service that you have to sign up for, it's just information from people who know what to do. So Lynn, you're one of the first people I've asked to be part of this because I respect everything you do for our seniors Thank and you. how many how many years experience? Ooh, a lot of okay, years. Okay, you're not willing to say how yeah, about, many. About 40. Okay. Yeah, a little bit over 40, so a lot of years. Yes. Yeah. And Lynn and I belong to a group called WISH, which is short for Women in Senior Health Care. And I've owned a home care business until February when I sold it for 10 years, and I am the newbie. I'm the new kid on the block. That's Everyone right. else that's part of our group pretty <laughs> much have been in health or wellness for... 20, 30, 40 years, like yourself. Yeah. So welcome today. Thank Lynn. you. And today we, uh, well, we discussed uh, at some point, I think it was at a meeting or something, that you um, felt like there was a topic about helping families through the holidays. It's so rough. Uh, the holidays, it's one of those things, Mary Lou, if you take just a, a standardized stress test, <laughs> one of the things that's going to be on there right. is, short, the holidays. <laughs> so any holiday right. that you might um, celebrate, mm -hmm. but especially at this time of the year, because we have Halloween, which I know may not be a big holiday, but it does bring back childhood memories and sure. things like that. And then we go into... Um, um, Thanksgiving, and then Hanukkah, Christmas, all those Big Kwanzaa, all, all of those holidays, things. right? Mm -hmm. And uh, it's rough for seniors, I think, especially, mm. and then for the families who work with seniors. I think the reason for that is because as we get older, we have lots more memories, mm -hmm. and our losses are incredibly deep. I see. And so it's rugged mm -hmm. because we're going through a time that should be full of joy. We know that Hallmark tells us right. that, right? Right, right? We watch those movies and everybody's happy and there might be one little problem, but we know at the end it will be resolvable. Yes. Not that way in real, in real life. life. Yeah. yeah. I think, too, we are an internet, you know, Facebook society, right? So yeah. we see we're not going to ne necessarily see someone who's sad and no. feeling bad on the internet. We're going to see all these happy, smiley, mm -hmm. having fun faces. Mm -hmm. And then to contrast that with what you're talking about, mm -hmm. they're thinking, what's wrong with me? Why am I totally. feeling this way? I think it adds on to yes, it. Yes, of course it does. And the food always looks nice. <laughs> you know, we know that's not true. <laughs> we know somebody's going to drop something. <laughs> and so it's, it, it's all yes. different, right. but I think the most uh, one of the most critical things uh, about the holidays mm -hmm. for any of us, but especially for for seniors yes. and for caregivers, is mm -hmm. that we look back at the way things used to be, yes. and we're not able to reconcile that right. with the way things are. Sure, we can't recreate it. 
So we mm-hmm. pine for it or we do. Yeah, There's yeah. such a deep loss. Yeah. I'll tell you, I had a client one time and this has been some years ago mm-hmm. and she, and I was seeing her on an outpatient basis and she would come, we would talk and, and, and she, I thought she had seasonal affective disorder, right. which is one of those things that affects you when the days start getting shorter yeah, and yeah. it's the dark. Light changes and, and, yes. and, right, right. and so we all get a little weird sure. around that time. But hers would very quickly turn into a deep clinical mm. depression. And so as I worked with her, what right. I found out that she did, and she did it every year, hmm. was in October, end of October, 1st yes. of November, she brought out all the photo albums. Because remember, we used to not be able to take pictures with our phone. So convenient. There's, serv- there's services now that actually print pictures. And I'm thinking... I'm old enough to know that that's how we did all of them back then. What a scary thing, but yes, yes. way me too. We had, we didn't have phones, <laughs> so not those kind of phones. We had right. landlines, right. but we didn't have anything else. But the deal is she had these photo albums, and she had many of them. And everyone in her family was gone. She mm. was in her late 70s, early 80s. Mm-hmm. She didn't really even have nieces and nephews. Mm. So she had had it come from a big family, right. brothers and sisters. She was one of the youngest. They had all passed away. Yes. Uh, aunts, uncles, grandparents, all these right. people were in these memories. And so she would take them out and she would look at them. Well, what it did was it reminded her of how lonely she was yeah. for family. Right. Contrasting and on how different it is now. Right. Unbelievable. And yeah. she had not created, which we can talk about later, which is so important around this time of the year, but she had not created a social family. Mm. So what she had was her family right. and nobody was there. So as she continued to mm-hmm. read, to look at pictures, mm-hmm. Okay, so then what happened was she would get depressed. Well, of course she got depressed. And depressed people do what? They isolate. Mm -hmm. So she began to just stay at home, not go out, didn't Mm. want to see lights, didn't want to see holiday kinds of things. And the more she did that, she didn't eat, she didn't sleep, she became majorly, came in. Every year for about three years we went through this. Mm. And finally... Um, and I didn't know at that point that yeah, that's what she yeah, was doing. That, right. So I wasn't asking the right questions. So mm. finally I said, tell me what you do right. almost as a ritual mm-hmm. for right. three months prior to the holidays. Well, not much, two months prior to the holidays. Well, I have these photo albums. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh my goodness. Yeah. So it took us a couple of years to get her to the point that she just wouldn't do it. Right, right. And and I gave her permission to do it, just not right then. Right. You look at those things in July. Yeah, yeah. You when just, you're able to sit and sun yourself, yeah, right? Yeah. And she got better. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That's great. So as you go, you know, through helping people like this person, what is it that we need to look out for for ourselves? And what are some of the things that you recommend? Um, because it's one thing to stop a practice or a ritual that's causing it. Mm -hmm. But, but what can we do? I'm a, I'm a, like, what can I do to make it better person? Absolutely. What do you suggest? What are some of the things that you would uh, suggest to people that they can do to break that cycle? Well, I think some of these tips and, and really I'll tell you what I call them. I call them holiday entrapments. Okay. Okay. I'm going to write that down. Holiday it, the, these are the kinds of things that we continue to do despite the fact that it doesn't work for us. And we're very smart people. Right. Our brain tells us first, yes. this ain't working. <laughs> but by the time it gets to our heart, yeah. there's not a lot we can do with it. So there are some holiday entrapments. So let me talk about those for okay. a minute first. Sure. Then we'll talk about what you can do. So the first holiday entrapment is we believe that somehow we have to give, um, I don't want to say homage, but kind of two things that have happened in the past. Okay. So we feel like we need to put the same decorations on the tree. Okay. We use the same uh, uh, candles that we've always used if we're doing a menorah or something like that. Right. We um, eat the same kinds of foods. Now, if that's still working for us, that's great. Right. But if it causes our memory to be tickled in a bad direction, mm-hmm. then 
don't do that yes. anymore. I talk to people all the time who've just come through a divorce and they will say, I just want this year to be different. Well, it can be. You can make it different. Um, do you always put up a tree? Yes. Oh, don't put up a tree this year. I've, I've got to put up a tree. <laughs> a tree. Uh, well, no, you know, well, I have children. Okay. Well, if you have children, that's a little bit different. I'll yes. tell you what, let's put up two trees this year. That's interesting. Let's put up a tree with yeah. old traditions. Yeah. Let's put up a tree right. with new traditions. Let the children make things or let them go pick out mm -hmm. things. Anything to take your brain in a different direction. Right. Because for some, and especially for somebody who's older, because again, they're very steeped in history yeah. and traditions. Mm -hmm. So they're like, yeah, I've always done this. So I'm always going to do this. Well, if it makes you sad or it makes those memories come in that are just too hard to handle. Right. Just don't do that anymore. Right. But we're entrapped in tradition and yeah. history. Tradition Does and that knowledge. make sense? Yeah. And, and then there's also another thing that I think relative to that, we script write. Script writing is, mean? well, that means that I write a script right. for how I want things to be. Mm -hmm. And then I wait to see if it happens. Right. Well, if you write a script for yourself, good job. Right. Most people need a little plan or a script. But if you're writing it for somebody else, nine times out of 10, it's not going to go that way. <laughs> and you are going to be so disappointed. Right. And that's what we do at the holidays. Just what you said earlier. Mm -hmm. We think of happy, friendly right. faced right. family mm -hmm. all around a beautiful mm -hmm. turkey or some kind of beautiful food. We think that. We right. think about uh, somebody opening gifts, which we'll talk about. And it's everybody says, oh, oh my goodness. Oh, thank you so much. This is lovely. That kind of thing. And then it doesn't happen. And then what happens? Right. Well, we get angry and we mm. get sad because we spend a lot of time on right. that gift. So would you say that we have like expectations of other people? Totally. Is that what you're talking about? Yes, great how, way to put it. Yeah. And if how you it might be or what they might say or how they will react or like what we do or not or Yes, mm -hmm. and as you write that script, right. those expectations, yes. the very center of it, mm -hmm. then you're disappointed when it doesn't happen. Right. So it's always better to say mm -hmm. this is how I wish it could happen. But my wishes are not everyone's wishes. Right. And so I won't hang my only star on that. I like which, that. Which brings us sort of to another entrapment. Okay. And, and I think this happens both to young and old, but especially to people who are in that whole aging process. They want to give the perfect gift. Mm. Many of them, A, don't have the resources to give the perfect sure. gift, don't know what the perfect gift is. So what do they do? Mm. They just worry mm. and they ruminate. Mm -hmm. How many times have you wanted to give the perfect gift to somebody and you spent lots of brain time <laughs> just trying to figure out yes, what it is? Yes. You go to stores, you go to Amazon, you go to right. every place and you're looking and you're yes. looking. Yeah. And then there, once you have it, right. there's so much pressure on the receiver yes. of the gift because of their reactions, not good. And I will say this to everyone right. who's looking at us. First of all, people love the unexpected. The unexpected is a written card. When's the last time somebody wrote you something? Right. We don't do, we don't yeah, write anymore. No. We're lucky if, it, if there's any we card involved. I mean, right now it's an email. Happy yes. birthday or a post on a Facebook. Yes. Happy birthday. Totally. <laughs> totally. And can you see, because right. I know it's the same for you, it certainly yes. is for me, that when somebody takes the time to write you mm -hmm. something, I save them. Yes. Because I don't get them. Well, I even collect them and I keep them for a year. I, I, I don't know why. I keep wow. whoever sent me an actual card. For a year. I love that. Why do you think you do that? I Because I appreciate those that took the time to acknowledge something in my life, whether it be a birthday or an anniversary or whatever. Totally. And it's being grateful. 
Yes. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. I love yeah. the way you say that. It's I, I can't grateful. keep them for the, forever, but I keep them for a year, you know, close to a year. Perfect. Yes. And here's the thing. I, I love that. I'm going to use that as an, as an example when I speak to somebody, because okay. I think that is so good. You keep them. And that saying, mm-hmm. this is precious to yes. me. Mm-hmm. But what about all the other gifts people give you, the right. hard gifts people give you? Most of us don't even remember what they were. Right. Unless somebody or gives who you... gave it to you, really. Yeah. yeah, you might look at it and go, hmm, I'm not sure who gave that to me. Yeah, right. Exactly. So don't be entrapped in, mm-hmm. I have to find that. And that don't be entrapped gift. in, I have to spend a lot of money. Well, I think when I know some people, um, when they feel like it needs to be special and they can't figure out what that is, that's what happens. They go out and they spend three times as much as they would want to or typically or because they're trying to make that impression upon someone boy that's such good insight uh i think back, it, it made me recall a memory of years and years and years ago right. i had a some some best girlfriends and one of them was after this guy i mean she really went after yeah. him and for the holidays right. she baked all these tins of cookies of which I'm sure probably embarrassed him, but he just didn't acknowledge him. Mm. She like put him on his porch and <laughs> this. So we finally all had to do a little um, sort of a um, intervention with her. <laughs> <laughs> to say, don't do that anymore. Right, right, right. So, but we do get entrapped, yeah. and it's exactly what you said. Right. And hoping for something that's grander than it it's probably will be. It's going to make some impression. Be. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. So don't do that. And mm-hmm. I always tell when I, I'm, I'm speaking actually to two independent senior properties this week on oh, Wednesday. Oh, okay. And one of the things I always tell them around the holidays right. is, um, if you have a dollar, and now it costs a dollar and twenty five cents. I know the dollar. Go to stores, the Dollar Tree. It starts with a dollar, but it doesn't always end <laughs> no. with the zeros. Buy a little <laughs> thing of candy canes. They have yes. it for a dollar twenty five. Okay. The people that you care about, yes. um, just put a little candy cane and put it under their door or at their door or during coffee in yes. the mornings when you have coffee with mm-hmm. just hand them. It's just a candy cane, but nothing is just a well. It when was it's just delivered a card, with a right? It's and perfect. I kept, I kept it for you. Perfect, right. perfect. Right. So you don't have to do mm-hmm. big time. As a matter of fact, I talked with a family. Gosh, I can't remember who this was, and it just happened. That's the thing about getting older. But uh, <laughs> but the, she was talking to me about how her family. There's like. I don't know. There's like five of them or something. Mm-hmm. And she said, and, and nobody's a kid. They're all older. Yeah, and she adult, said they, they adults. all take, uh, $10. Now it would be $12 right. <laughs> or whatever, but, uh, go to the Dollar Tree yes. and they buy 10 things. Oh, okay. And you have to go to the Dollar Tree and it can be a silly thing or it can be something that'd be usable. And then they give those to each other. And she said, it has been so way much more fun. I'm sure. Because there are 10 things to open. So you're anticipating, <laughs> even if you open it, it's a little tape measure right, or something, right. you're like, yeah, I can use that. <laughs> and, and you think about it. Yeah. Out of 10 things, there's at least going to be a couple. Sure. And then everybody's had an opportunity to open not one, not two, right. three, but 10 things, right. which looks like yes. a lot. Yeah, because I think sometimes, I mean, I've had um, a family member um, give me an expensive gift, mm-hmm. which was, I mean, wonderful, but it, it was uh, unexpected and, and kind of uncomfortable. Embarrassing, to be honest just a with little you. bit. Yeah, yeah, sure. It was an expensive watch. And it was no special Christmas. It was just any other Christmas. But I think, I don't know. I don't know what. I love that. And I don't want, you know, you don't want to. Of what course, I said, do? wow, this yeah. is wonderful. Thank yeah. you so much. Yes. But I'm thinking to myself, why? And what yeah. do I give to them? And I know. How do I, I make like, this oh, up. And I'm yeah. embarrassed about my gift now. <laughs> and yes, I yeah. think. 
I think what we have to do at that point, that's a great example too. I'm just going to take you with me when I do these talks. But, <laughs> you're but, sweet. But no, it's true because you're giving me a, a lot of stuff here. Mm-hmm. But I think when somebody gives us something mm-hmm. that's like that yes. and is embarrassing to us mm-hmm. and puts us a little in a weird position, I think what we just have to do is to say, wow, I was in a bad position there. But I'm going to enjoy this watch. Yeah. And I'm not going to think that next year right. I have to give something that's yes. as expensive as this watch. Yeah. Because perhaps they just had a really good year right. and they wanted to share it with me. Or maybe they saw it and they connected it with, it was you. with you know, oh, this is Mary Lou or this yeah. is Lynn. And yeah. So they went all yeah. out. Yeah. So yeah. try not to attach too much to it. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I think for when we're talking about mm-hmm. older folks, we we want to watch for certain things. Okay. Um we want to watch for signs of the blues ver- depression. Uh, blues is holiday blues is very different from depression. In short, holiday blues is usually as- associated with one particular thing and it can be loss and it can be just the holidays and the memories right. it brings back. But the deal is it's going to leave. Yeah. Those feelings are going to dissipate. It's mm-hmm. going to be okay. Clinical depression will not. Mm. It will remain. It will need treatment. It may be talking treatment. It may be medicine treatment. Right. It may be a combination of both. So where do you draw that line? Like, no. give me an example of, uh, is it just prolonged blues or depression? Is it a timeline or is, are there other things that give us an indication that it's more depression versus blues? It's a great question. I think that it's more depression when the symptoms are more intensive. Okay. And and they are things like not eating, not sleeping, and or flip that switch all around, eating all the time, Okay. and sleeping on the couch with a blanket like you're tenting. You know, mm-hmm. it's, it's that yeah. kind of thing. <clears throat> and those, those folks, so any symptoms to the extreme yes. sadness you'll have with the blues, right? But sadness with depression is a deep sadness. You can see it in their face. Right. They may be tearful. They may even say things to you like, I just don't know why I'm still here. Mm. Because older people, because they've lost more people, right. have a deep sense of, I'm a survivor and it didn't feel that great. Yeah. We always think about survivors as surviving yes, a good yes. thing. But survivors, if they're the ones who've been left behind, right. a lot of times worry. they worry about a lot of things. They feel like I'm probably going to be next, which is true. Mm-hmm. They think, why did I have to be the one to stay? I know that the ones before me could have done better with this. Right. So they Isolate. Okay. They have a tendency just to so extended be by isolation. Yes. Would be another one. Yes. Okay. Yes. Feelings of hopelessness, helplessness. Mm-hmm. Okay. Some suicidal kind of thinking yeah. that comes with a clinical depression. Okay. Yeah. So so there's that difference. Mm-hmm. But I think at the holidays, what you really want to look for mm-hmm. is. Does this person, is this person doing what they've always done? I mean, is this, because I've had people say, well, my mother has all those symptoms, but she's always had right, them. Right. Well, if she's always had them, then she's probably going to have them at the holidays. That's yes. not going to change yes. things. However, if there's a change in mental status, okay. that whole um, fun. And you know, I, I'll tell you, this is another whole show, but um, memory is very affected by depression and can be reversible. Yes. It, it's not, you that don't, honor, you don't really have dementia. <clears throat> and if you do, that's a whole nother thing, but right. you don't really have dementia. You're just, your brain and your heart yes. are so full of stuff yeah. and it hurts to remember. So you just, don't. yeah, I, I've, um, work with people before that, um, you know, I, I try to share with them to give themselves some grace because Mm. when you're sad or depressed or upset about something, it takes a lot of emotional energy and energy is energy. And so it has to come from somewhere. And if, if they're pouring into that, then memory could be one of the first things or misplacing things or stumbling or, you know, other things physical, um, because they're, that energy is being pulled from them because of the sadness. 
Yes, that's a great it way to put it. just reminded me of that when you, when you were talking yes. about it. And the people who you guys have given care to mm-hmm. in the past, mm-hmm. you do realize, which is makes total sense, even hearing and gait and balance yes. and strength, all those things are compromised yes. when you're depressed mm-hmm. because you're not you're thinking in a different way. Right. You're using sort of a different part of your brain, so mm-hmm. it's hard. I, I would say an, another thing to to watch for is it is this person because you mentioned this. Mm-hmm. Does this person complain all the time <laughs> the last couple of months <laughs> about everything? Right. Like it's like they're focused. They're the they're the most half empty glass there is. <laughs> So they're just complaining. And what is the root of their complaint? Mm. Because sometimes it's just sort of free-floating complaints. Right. Sometimes it will be things like, I'm tired all the time. Mm. Now, if you've not heard them say they're tired, and by the way, we see that as a part of aging. We're like, well, of course I'm tired. I'm old. Well, no, 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 no. You don't just all of a sudden one day get up and go, I'm old, I'm tired. It doesn't work that way. True. So when you find yourself Mm -hmm. tired like that, and it's out of the ordinary for you, it's either something physical or something emotional. Mm. It's one of those two things. Right. Now, here's the other thing that people... People get entrapped on. They don't take their medicines around the holidays. This mm. is a freestanding problem for not just older people. It's like, yeah, I'm not going to take that today. Right. Yeah, I'm not taking that blood right. pressure medicine. Right. I don't have to have that today. Or something like this. Yeah, I forgot my uh, medicine for my diabetes, but it probably won't hurt <laughs> for one day. Those are the people we're going to see in the hospital. Right. So take your medicines. Mm-hmm. Now, here's what happens with the older people. And we know this, and it breaks our hearts here. As a family, mm-hmm. anticipate that if they don't have money, right, they will sometimes oh. not do something like eat or take right. their medicines right. or pay their bill because sure. they want to have money to get you a wow. gift. So I like to say to families, if you, if let's take um, your your um, grandma for example, right. grandma doesn't have any money. And she's going to feel so bad when she comes to us for the holidays. That's when you say to grandma, hey, we're doing something a little bit different this year. Right. We're, we're going to open some presents with the children on Christmas Eve. But on Christmas morning when we get up, we got these 10 things from the Dollar Tree. I'll take you shopping when you get here. Excellent. Yeah. Yeah. Because then she knows she's only got to have about fifteen or twenty dollars. I'm just thinking as a caregiver, you know, <coughs> with my caregiver heart, mm-hmm. that it would be really wonderful to, you know, we tend to look at the holiday itself mm-hmm. as the day or time to give something. But what if we all, you Love know, it. thought about our seniors um, leading up to that and give them things like a meal, for example, which they That's can't awesome. give away to someone else. That they're going to so good. take care of themselves with. I, I think I'm, I I I'm going to do that. I, th- I think you just gave me an idea for the holidays. I Rather than giving great. something on the holiday, maybe yeah. some really nice experiences, bringing a dinner or it's perfect meal or sa- even if it's a sandwich. What it's perfect. anything that it's they perfect. would take care of them. Because I wrote that down. I mean, re- resist taking care of themselves in order to give to others. That yes. would be something my you know, my grandmother would do for yes, sure. I love it. Yeah. And if it is something, if they still have something that they used to do mm-hmm. and they don't do anymore, right. like baking. Yes. That's a big deal. It's okay Standing to and stay. stirring and seeing the mixture. Yes. Yeah, yeah. To yeah. say, listen, mm-hmm. I've been trying to make those cookies mm. that you made for the mm-hmm. last 10 years. I can't seem to get it right. <laughs> Listen, which would be true in my case, but yeah, we can make, (laughs) could you just help me? Right. Could you just come out? I mean, I'll get the kids to chop or I'll do pre things. If you can just say, yeah, Mary Lou, I'd add a little bit of vanilla to that because that's how those people cook. Sure. Not a recipe. (laughs) They just pinched a little bit off. That's so true. Yeah. So anything like that, that you can do to make them feel a part. Yes. 
is wonderful. And then you, and then you put those things in tins and they can even take some home and give them away or whatever. But yes, I love the before the holidays. That's wonderful. Yes. And I, I, I love asking for getting, help. Yeah. Yes. Asking for help. Because here's the thing is we get older. Yes. People don't ask us for help as much. Mm. Somebody asked me the other day if I, they said, are you ever going to retire? Which makes me a little sad because I'm like, do I really look that old? Yeah, I probably, yeah, I probably do. Uh, so are you ever going to retire? And I say, well, here's the thing. Uh, if if I retired, who, who would I help? Right. I mean, for me, yes. um, it, my background's in counseling. It's what I did for yeah. a lot of years. If I can't help something, yes. somebody, I, I can't breathe very well. I'm the same way. It's, it's in my DNA. Yeah. And you yeah. always will be. Yes. Um, we were at some meeting, and and I brought a picture of me as a Girl Scout. Someday I'll show you. <laughs> so I, was like, I was like maybe eight years old. Oh, and I said, this girl here is the same girl that's inside, you know, tucking oh, people's oh. tags in when they stuck out or picking up trash as Switch a little Girl do. Scout. Or I ran, you know, a couple of different fundraisers. But caregivers, especially the ones that, you know, are, are with not just seniors, but anyone that needs help and giving them care day to day. They're the real heroes. They're the special yeah. people. Oh my goodness. And then let's talk about that for just a minute. Yes. Cause caregivers at the holidays mm. now have their particular families to worry about and their extended families to worry about. Right. And they do worry about them. Sure. And they also feel, I hope somebody's listening here. If you're a caregiver, <laughs> often an inordinate amount of anger that they can't let it out. So it has to be mashed back down and mm. why should I have to do this? Yes. I mean, I can remember when my mm. uh, mother, uh, you know, was alive. None of none, John's parents were both alive. Uh, my dad died very young, but we would have to figure it out. Okay. We'll spend this time with my mom and we'll do this and we'll take Bennett over there and then we'll drive out to your parents' house, which was like three and a half hours away right. and we'll do some Christmas mm -hmm. there. Never one time during that did we say, and maybe we'll have a little glass of wine at midnight. If no one about us it was all right. about them. And sometimes that was lovely mm -hmm. that we had that family we have right. great memories right but sometimes yeah you just wanted to your say feet hurt what you about wanted to put us? your feet up and yeah every thanksgiving <laughs> this will be the first thanksgiving without right. john's mom every single thanksgiving do big thanksgiving for my family and because she's not able to do that anymore go that afternoon and carry big thanksgiving to her yes. and you know there would be a time uh, and, and now I'm grateful for those memories. Right. But during them, sure. there would be a time that I would just say, I want everybody to leave and I want to take a nap. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. often, you know, during those times, we're raising children yes. and caring for people as well. A lot of people are in that situation. Yes. Well, we've and, been talking for a while. I'm sorry yep. to interrupt, but yep. I want to make sure there, you know, what else do you have in your heart or in your mind to say? Um, before we wrap up, um, okay. that for, for people going into the holidays that either might be a caregiver or might be a senior that's watching this. Yeah. Watch yourself. You okay. know yourself better than mm -hmm. anyone else. And, and don't deny the feelings that you have, but you don't have to act on them. Guess mm. what? You know, you can feel whatever you want to feel. That's between you and your higher power. Right. Okay. But, but don't, don't act on them, but it's okay to feel it. It is healthy to be angry. It is healthy right. to be sad. None of those gamut of emotions are bad, mm -hmm. only in extremes, which brings the, to this point. Yes. Anything that's done in excess is probably not your best friend for the holidays. If you're going to have a party, have a beverage that's an alcohol beverage, that's great. Have something that's not. Right. Have a mock cocktail mm -hmm. or something like that so that people don't have to say, do you have any water or anything right, like that? Right, have right. something for mm -hmm. them. But the other thing is, watch yourself. We're all going to parties. Mm -hmm. We're all going to parties where there's lots of alcohol yes. and where there's lots of things to eat. And there's something about that buffet, which we sort of got out of during COVID, which was nice, but now it's back a little bit. Yes. And there's something about us that says, I have to eat one of everything on that buffet line. That is nobody's rule. Right. And also, you know, if you ask people to bring things, let's say they're not going to bring a salad. 
They're、no、gonna bring、way. some dippy, cheesy, sausagey, <laughs> or chocolate fondue <laughs> true, with、right. nuts and coconut, and, <laughs> right, yeah, right, and, right. That, and all those things are fine.、Yes. Here's the thing: your body is used to what you're doing right now.、Mm-hmm. So if right now you're an open buffet, it's okay during the holidays. But if you're not,、right. it will change biophysically what's、yes. happening with you,、okay. and you won't feel good. That'll、right. be the first thing, and you'll feel guilty, but mostly you won't feel good. Exercise during the holidays. Don't、okay. stop because you're busy. You need to walk. Walk it out.、I、always、okay. tell that to people. You don't have to do big exercise, but walking is fabulous. And、um, and and eat the right things. And at the holidays,、mm-hmm. tell people who you care about that you care about them. But the rest, anything that you think you're doing just to be honest, yes, watch that. Okay. Because because sometimes we hurt people's feelings、sure. by saying I've always. Thought I should tell you this.、Right. Well, don't tell me at the holidays.、Right. I'm already going through stress. Yeah, I could see that maybe someone is going through the blues, even if it's not depression, and they show up differently.、Mm-hmm. And then we feel it's our duty to tell, tell them. Tell them you're looking a little bad. Well, I've just never seen you without makeup. <laughs> well, you look a little. Shy. I don't know why people yeah, do that. And then you're yeah, like, How come you、oh, canceled? Yeah, I felt bad. Right. And now, now I, I feel, feel、yeah. I feel terrible. Now I feel like I need to go home. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So yeah. keep your comments to yeah, yourself. Yeah. Keep your comments to yourself during don't, the holidays. Don't. don't I'm going to take a poster. Keep your comments <laughs> to yourself during the holidays. I love it. <laughs> don't. Don't also think that you have to resolve every familial,、right. every family conflict、right. at the holidays. People do that.、Yeah. It's like Jim's coming, and he hasn't been a long time. So let's be really nice to him. What? <laughs> you know, just it, it,、right. it, let's all be nice anyway. Let's、right. all be courteous anyway. Let's all be. Let's bring civility back for the holidays. Wouldn't、yes. that be lovely? Yes. Yeah. I、like、um、that. somewhere someone told me you know feelings are temporary. Always. So if you are feeling frustrated or impatient. Give it a minute. It'll go.、Away. It'll go away. It'll go away, you and you'll feel different.、It. And I always say you may feel worse, but I, but I will tell you, <laughs> totally, true. you're going to feel I'm different. I'm a half glasses half full girl, so I'm thinking it's going to get better. But you're, yeah, you're right; it、yeah, can go the other、yeah. direction. But that's okay. Yes, as long as we know <laughs> that what you said,、right. which is probably the most important thing that's been said at this table. At every feeling、mm-hmm. that you have is temporary. Yes, and so you can get through it. Yes. Just don't put an action to it、mm-hmm. that's going to cause some、right. issues later on for yeah. you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and don't feel bad if you feel mad. Just mad that you've got too much to、right. do and too little time to do it. Don't feel mad about that. Just don't feel bad about being mad. Just go. I'm mad. I really、yeah. shouldn't have to do all this. Acknowledge it. Right. Well, I think I will just sit down and have a glass of iced tea or whatever I want <laughs> to drink because five minutes from now is going to be、right. different anyway. Right. Exactly. There you go, Lynn. Thank you so much for sharing、My、everything、pleasure. that you've known to. I'm going to reach out to you. My pleasure. You. It was、Appreciate、wonderful. It. Thank you, Mary Lou. You're welcome.